a pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Evgeny, or as we call him, Eugene uh, Smirnov. So um, again, uh, kind of a common theme for the beginning of these seminars. I, I've met Eugene in EPFL in Switzerland. So he did his PhD there while I was a postdoc. And uh, we've been working together on and off uh, really nearly the whole time since. So it's a real pleasure to introduce um, Eugene and uh, looking forward to your talk today, Eugene. Here you go. Thanks, Michal. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, today, uh, my presentation will be devoted mainly to what I've done uh, at the PFL, uh, but also, as I promised, I will try to uh, give you some overview uh, what we what we did and what we are going to do here in Moscow, because currently I'm uh, a researcher at Moscow State University. Okay, let's go. Um, tech. Mm -hmm. uh, I will probably not do like this. Okay. Um, okay, so outline for today's presentation. I will briefly introduce myself for whom uh, didn't, uh, didn't meet me before. And then I stop um, and give you some overview over the uh, Gold Nano Film project that, that I'm going to present. Uh, and uh, uh, afterwards, we move forward uh, to main results. It will be split, let's say, in two big sections. The first one is the physical chemistry, where I cover uh, self-assembly, uh, some characterization of Gold Nano particles, um, we also speak about uh, some low interfacial uh, tension systems. And then we move uh, to electrochemistry uh, with some focus on what you actually can uh, do uh, with the nanofilms placed at, li at liquid liquid interface and how you can use them in electrochemistry and electrocatalysis, of course. Then I will stop uh, shortly on what is done, what is not done, and then um, uh, present, uh, present you my new laboratory of optical, uh, of bioanalytical methods and optical uh, sensing systems and give you some examples. And uh, let's say, I hope I, I will try to keep track on time <laughs> uh, because I have plenty of examples how, uh, let's say simple methods like, um, like UV spectroscopy, like fluorescent spectroscopy, Raman spectroscopy and microscopy can be really, really useful uh, for detection of some compound. Okay, let's start. Okay. Uh -huh. I created a small movie, so <laughs> I'm from uh, Tver. It's a city between Moscow and St. Petersburg, so uh, very beautiful one. So stop there if you travel from Moscow to St. Petersburg. Then I relocated to uh, Moscow where I studied uh, at Material Science Department of Moscow State University. There I spent uh, uh, six years, uh, I think, or so. And the, my main uh, activities was uh, uh, about uh, uh, titanium dioxide, uh, some uh, magnets, uh, materials, uh, some materials of absorption, and so on. Um, then, so yeah, uh, then I moved uh, uh, for some short stay. <coughs> uh, by I was invited by DED uh, to Duisburg Western University to work there with Professor Matthias Ulbricht. And I guess there uh, we published my first article ever. Uh, so kind of like remarkable uh, story. We worked it on functionalization of uh, titanium uh, particles with uh, some polymers, with some smart coordinates. Uh, after that, uh, I uh, returned back to Moscow. Um, I finished there my studies uh, at Moscow State University. And uh, shortly after receiving the diploma, I moved to uh, EPFL to uh, e uh, LEPA, a group of Professor Giro. Uh, and uh, yeah, you, you see the remarkable pictures of uh, EPFL campus in Lausanne. Uh, this is uh, our group 
uh, with uh, some participant of conference. Uh, I think it's 2014 or something like this. So it's almost the last year when we were in Lausanne because afterwards we moved forward uh, uh, to uh, Sion. And in Sion, we, we had really, really cool campus, uh, pretty brand new. Uh, and you can see over there, uh, there are also two buildings uh, uh, constructed additionally to, to, to the Sion campus building that is over here. Uh, and yeah, of course, picturesque uh, view. Uh, this is our lab, uh, Hubert in the middle. Uh, and afterwards, I moved uh, back forward. So I stayed for some time working uh, in startup in startup company, but then I uh, moved uh, decided to move back to Moscow. And currently, I'm working for uh, Lomonos Moscow State University. And this is our new logo of our our lab. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. So this is a brief introduction uh, about myself. Uh, if you have some questions or you want to discuss something with me, uh, some something, uh, some my experience, let's say, uh, then please, uh, I think we can uh, send this uh, uh, this uh, presentation as a PDF, so we can we can follow all the links and so on, and uh, we can discuss. Okay, now briefly about LEPA because um, uh, LEPA is a kind of like big laboratory because uh, it combines physical and analytical electrochemistry. And uh, analytical uh, chemistry uh, was focused mainly on uh, uh, mass spectrometer electroanalysis, uh, uh, some chromatography plus uh, electrochemical microscopy that. Uh, was presented by my former colleagues uh, Dima, uh, uh, Andreas, uh, and so on, and physical chemistry. Uh, I think I still saw some supercritical CO2 reduction, but uh, main focus uh, shifted when I stayed to electron transfer soft interfaces and redox flow batteries. Uh, and my, let's say, area of expertise was uh, mostly uh, in electron transfer at soft interfaces. So this is a roadmap, uh, pretty, uh, pretty everything what we have done uh, at LEPA. Uh, we started uh, into, I started uh, in 2012, and by 2014, we published our first great article uh, with Michal. Uh, in ACS Nana, and from that uh, we, we started to continue all this project. So I will uh, today I will talk about this. I will speak about this. I will speak about self-assembly at low interfacial tension. Then I moved uh, to then I will move to uh, electro uh, chemistry part. Uh, explain you how to transfer such nice films uh, to interface between uh, two liquids. And uh, then I give you an example uh, how such films can be used in interfacial electrocatalysis uh, for oxygen reduction. Uh, technically speaking, liquid-liquid um, interface or liquid air interface provides a um, very nice platform uh, with homogeneous distribution of, uh, of let's say, sites uh, on it. And uh, the most important that is defect free. So we do not see or almost do not see any homogeneous in it. Um, it has, uh, it possess uh, self healing nature. Um, and usually we are working with a highly transparent um, solvent. Uh, of course we can assemble some, nano, uh, some molecules, sub nano or nano or even micro objects at uh, liquid liquid interface and uh, my take, uh, take home message today for you will be that liquid liquid interface is almost a perfect system to make study and ma manipulate with nano and micro field uh, ma nano particles and micro particles films and also it can be applied uh, further not only for some fundamental studies but also for 
uh, very practical studies like SAFs, like uh, many others. A couple of words about plasmonic nanoparticles uh, who is not involved in uh, this um, part of the science. So we have metallic particle and we have electric field, uh, for example, uh, light. Uh, we can move uh, very uh, uh, free electrons uh, in such metal particles, create a dipole. And this dipole starts to oscillate and we can observe uh, this oscillation as a uh, as a, oops, as a um, ab abnormal absorption, so-called, uh, on the uh, on the uh, UV absorption spectrum. Um, of course, most of the metal nanoparticles uh, has colored uh, solutions. We used only uh, gold nanoparticles and obtained them by citrate. Uh, classical, very classical citrate method. Uh, why we studied and why we uh, did um, self-assembly uh, at liquid-liquid interfaces. Uh, the main motivation was a very, I would say, old idea that uh, somehow you, you, should be you, you, you should manage to manipulate uh, with uh, nanoparticles uh, at liquid-liquid interface, especially with uh, optical properties of such particles. Because uh, you, I mean, nanoparticles, they are charged, so you can bring it to the interface, you can pull off from the interface, you can somehow with electric field arrange them at the interface, and this is a really cool uh, story for all these um, smart optics, let's say. And uh, as, you, as you see here, this was uh, for example, proposed maybe not for the first time, but for sure uh, with very nice explanation from theoretical point of view by Kornishev uh, and his colleagues uh, in 2008. However, there are many uh, problems. The first problem that a relatively high potential barrier uh, prevents uh, nanoparticles to absorb at the interface. So, uh, technically speaking, uh, nanoparticles. Uh, do not see the the interface uh, with uh, all this uh, gain in energy and so on. Um, the second problem is that uh, films are usually brighter. For example, uh, Bora with his colleagues in Canada uh, developed many, many uh, ways how to assemble nanoparticles, how to, uh, in, 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 in the liquid mirror, how to manipulate with them. Uh, but most of the time, uh, the main problem was a breakage uh, of the film or some kind of like cracks and so on. And the third problem was uh, there are methods uh, to, function, uh, to functionalize particles, but they're time consuming, they're expensive, and we wanted something really easy to do. Uh, when I started to uh, get deeper in this uh, topic, I got uh, with a such uh, view that there are two methods how you can uh, settle particles at the interface. The first one is a so-called zero tension. For example, you add ethanol or methanol, uh, you shake, uh, they form kind of like a third phase between oil and water, and uh, then uh, nanoparticles uh, get trapped, and then uh, ethanol or methanol, just any alcohol disappear, and then you have such a nice feel at the interface. And the, the second way, uh, the more, let's say, common way, is uh, to reduce charge on the nanoparticles. Uh, they uh, they uh, become less charged and they start uh, they started to interact with the interface. So you can do it very, by, by various methods like decreasing pH, increasing ionic strengths, adding some promoters, uh, and so on and so forth. It's all about the same. It's about the reducing the charge. And um, when I arrived, uh, uh, one of my colleagues, Astrid, who worked with um, a TTF uh, molecules, and TTF has some unique uh, property, let's say, uh, that it's soluble uh, only in organic liquids, but uh, once it's oxidized, it's soluble in both organic and water. Uh, we started to play uh, with this because sulfur 
uh, has a very high affinity to gold or gold to sulfur. Uh, here we have uh, four sulfur atoms. So why not to play with that? Also, we have these charged species like DTF plus and uh, coming back to previous explanation, we, we can use this uh, TTF plus to reduce charge on the gold, uh, on the gold nanoparticle. So we added some shaking and uh, uh, get something like this. So we used the one uh, millimole of TTF in DC. So DC it's uh, dehlorethane. We use uh, we use the uh, water solution of uh, gold nanoparticles, shake them together, and uh, surprisingly we saw very nice uh, liquid film uh, placed uh, around the uh, drop of uh, of organic solvent. And if we use uh, if we use big nanoparticles, we have mirroring effect. If we use small nanoparticle, we have uh, filtering effect. Uh, there is a small again small video. Uh, I just need to change uh, a small video describing. Oops, sorry. Uh, small video describing uh, uh, how it works in the reality. Uh, so I used. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, yellow liquid is a um, uh, DC with a TTF. Uh, red solution is gold nanoparticles, so we shake them rigorously for like, one two minutes, and uh, nanoparticles start uh, uh, start to sediment uh, to settle at the liquid liquid interface, and uh, yeah, shake once again, and we completely remove uh, nanoparticles from uh, aqueous phase. Uh, of course, we can change the solution. Uh, we uh, can add more uh, new, uh, fresh solution of uh, gold nanoparticles and the shake once again, and it becomes more and more lustre, uh, lustrous film. Uh, yeah, the only question is how much you can add. Uh, I can say that uh, <laughs> <laughs> almost infinite amount because at some point I just uh, I was just bored by doing this uh, but uh, like five or seven monolayers uh, nanoparticles that equivalent to these uh, monolayers you can add and another very interesting property is a mechanical uh, mechanical link between nanoparticles because you can see very small very tiny wrinkles uh, over there uh, uh, when I pull uh, up and down the uh, the, uh, um, the organic phase, and uh, just imagine you have nanoparticles that are like 10, 20, like 50 nanometers that are linked uh, in the range of millimeter scale. So this is really cool. This means that these particles are really uh, stuck in together uh, uh, in a very in very nice way and uh, the, this is another example uh, you can really scale up this process this is 20 centimeters mirror that we created for Lenuit de Science in Geneva uh, and uh, how we can um, as I explain this self-healing nature uh, uh, why our film uh, didn't broke uh, like many uh, films of nanoparticles created by others. Uh, let's say we have bricks, that is the gold nanoparticles, uh, and we wanted to construct some wall or some, I don't know, some hole. Uh, and uh, if, we, if we do not put any linker between bricks, they simply just fall down and that's all. If we add this uh, linking molecules or linker or uh, let's say Lego style uh, bricks, then we can really create really, really good and really um, not brittle and really strong wall. Um, to highlight some key findings that we did, we uh, we did a set of uh, films with different amount of nanoparticles, uh, we can calculate uh, their coverage, we understand where multi-layer starts, uh, we understand uh, how they behave. We showed that uh, this method is very good to remove nanoparticles completely from aqueous phase. Uh, we try it with different solvents, of course, and uh, 
uh, last but not least that I uh, told you already, that is mechanical properties and particles connectivity. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, I showed you example with uh, high uh, interfacial uh, tension. Um, that is the case for, for example, many, many solvents like you know, DC, like um, TFT, many of them. But what if we find such a pair of uh, solvents like water and something else uh, with very low interfacial tension? Suddenly, even without TTF, we, uh, we are able to settle particles at such interface, but the, the film is not that much shiny. Uh, but if we add the TTF, uh, then uh, nanoparticles suddenly transfer to, uh, to oil phase. In this case, uh, this is PC, uh, propylene carbonate. And uh, in principle, we can use this uh, technique to concentrate nanoparticles uh, uh, up to 10, 15 weight percent and uh, make uh, kind of like ink uh, to, to, to inkjet printing a porous gold electrode. Uh, and this is possible, of course, we, at some point we were <laughs> shocked by this behavior because it, it was not what we expect. And we started to investigate uh, why it's like this. Uh, we found that uh, nanoparticles um, in PC, they have uh, more, let's say, a more narrow uh, distribution in uh, in zeta potential. So we, uh, compare uh, in comparison to uh, to initial echo solution, they almost the same uh, in size. Uh, but uh, as we uh, as we see uh, from uh, STM uh, EDX uh, mapping. Um, they are covered by the layer of uh, of TTF. So uh, TTF form a shell around uh, nanoparticles and this uh, unique nature of uh, TTF forming a PP stack. And so when molecules stack, so one over another one allows to transfer nanoparticles to, to oil phase and uh, to protect particles from uh, agglomeration because uh, this uh, p stacking occurs almost with a uh, with a small change in energy. Coming back to uh, to to overview uh, and uh, to uh, our liquid liquid interfaces, um, some time ago, uh, and as far as I remember. Uh, most of uh, liquid liquid electrochemistry uh, started from that. Uh, people started to interest in uh, in studying uh, peptides, uh, membranes, uh, and so on and so forth. And uh, our liquid liquid interface is kind of like half of the cell membrane, uh, and uh, the uh, interface itself uh, in uh, in four electrode configuration is a is a working electrode. So. Uh, every charge uh, passing uh, uh, from one phase to another one, we will see as a current. Uh, so it might be uh, uh, ion, it might be um, uh, it might be uh, an electron, uh, but th this is all about charge. Um, here at the bottom, I just give you some idea what we used as a as a uh, as a cell. Uh, our solvents were typically DC and then TFT. I will not stop uh, here for a long time, just to say that uh, we, we observe such nice curves uh, for blank uh, uh, interface uh, without any, uh, anything uh, except uh, supporting electrolytes. And if we add, for example, TMA, we observe uh, increasing current in, in the like TMA, tetramethyl ammonium ions, we observe a very nice, uh, a very nice uh, peak uh, for uh, transfer from one phase to another one. It can be again either electron, either ion. We we cannot say uh, in advance what is that. 
And uh, the, ne the next question was, okay, uh, we want to study uh, such film uh, uh, that I described it before uh, for some electrochemical behavior. Will, will it be conductive or uh, will it take part in some uh, catalytic process and so on and so forth? Uh, but the problem was that <coughs> previous, <coughs> uh, previously, uh, in, of course, in our group as well, <coughs> uh, people uh, try to play with uh, with a such system like colloidal particles, interfaces, settle, and so on and so on. But they faced some problems like large volume of large volumes of alcohol that what was added to the system affects the capacity uh, capacitive current, for example, uh, affect the organic phase. So organic phase is not anymore organic; it's kind of like a mixture because you add 10% of this alcohol or something like that. Um, we cannot say anything about <coughs> amount of nanoparticles adsorbed at the interface. Also, it was also a problem. So we, we cannot do any uh, calculations. Uh, we solved that problem by injecting very precisely with a tiny capillary um, uh, me uh, methanol and the solution of gold nanoparticles at the interface, uh, we can create very nice, very lustrous films, um, any shape, any size and so possible. We prevent pollution of electrochemical system. It's very important. And thus we have very low capacitive current, so we can see very uh, small movements of ions or uh, electrons across the interface. Uh, the only limitation was that uh, we can create only half a monolayer field. Uh, and once we did that, uh, okay, the second, uh, the second question after solving this problem was, okay, what, what, what will happen if we, if we add TTF as an electron donor and do what kind of like process can happen at the interface? Uh, we observed, <coughs> we observed uh, an electrochemical wave, okay, it can be electron or ion. Uh, and uh, we try to investigate this story uh, more deeply, uh, change the TTF to, uh, in principle, similar uh, from an electrochemical point of view, uh, first uh, they, they They have pretty the same uh, electrochemical potentials. Uh, and uh, for first we observed the same, the same story, the same peak, uh, uh, but a bit shifted. Okay. Uh, we started to think in this direction and uh, at some point we understand that it's an uh, electron donor molecule that is oxidized um, in contact with a gold nanoparticles and gold nanoparticles becomes uh, charged. Uh, and uh, we developed uh, um, uh, we developed a kind of like explanation for that. Um, that we have uh, gold nanoparticles with a uh, uh, Fermi level uh, somewhere, uh, somewhere here, fix it below ferrocene and the TTF uh, redox couples. For example, we can speculate about this couple, but we are not sure, but let's say somewhere here. And then we, we add in uh, ferrocene or TTF, and then uh, we pump uh, electrons to uh, to, to nanoparticle and nanoparticle is a uh, is a storage of uh, such uh, of, uh, of electrons from uh, electron donor. Uh, I won't stop here for for a long time. Just to say, there are some links you can read it uh, by yourself. Uh, I just want to say here that uh, such film, uh, since they are connected, because I, I showed you for before uh, that the film technically. Uh, connecting with each other across uh, and nanoparticles in the film connected with each other across the film. And uh, uh, gold nanoparticles here can be charged uh, by one redox couple in one place uh, like this and discharged at another place like that. And uh, this happens uh, with very, very improved kinetics uh, compared to, to uh, regular, let's say, uh, heterogeneous electron transfer, homogeneous electron transfer. And what we, what we did afterwards, we, we, we thought that we need to 
to apply this for, for some, some real, uh, a bit more real um, samples. Uh, and uh, we uh, change uh, ferrocene and TTF to very strong electron donor DMFC. And what we observed, we observed very high uh, electrocatalytic wave, uh, almost uh, with very small, uh, uh, with very small uh, overpotential uh, uh, in aerobic conditions. And in anaerobic conditions, uh, there is no such wave. So we, we observe just the transfer of electrolyte. Of course, we did uh, all necessary experiments. Uh, and what we found, we found that uh, we can charge nanoparticles uh, from this uh, bottom level uh, very high, uh, add a little bit more energy to overcome some uh, kinetic uh, barriers or something like this. And uh, then we can, uh, even on gold nanoparticles, this is important because gold is very uh, bad um, catalyst for, for oxygen, oxygen reduction. We can reduce oxygen to peroxide with uh, some some yield, let's say, <laughs> the twenty two percent is not uh, big uh, big enough, but still we we can do that. Okay, so about perspectives, what has been done already? We we did very big, uh, very large mirrors <clears throat> in uh, in space. Uh, uh, in principle, we can do up to twenty thirty centimeters uh, with with no problem. We tried to play around colloidosomes. Uh, colloidosomes is a kind of like small drop of uh, one liquid into another one uh, covered uh, by uh, nanoparticles. Uh, <clears throat> we also played with Maragoni shutters. So all the stories that I, I told you about uh, controlling uh, positioning of uh, uh, nanoparticles at liquid-liquid interface, we kind of like did this with Morgan shutters. Uh, <clears throat> we showed that in principle this one is possible. <clears throat> what hasn't been done, hasn't been done um, is a self-terminating welding because nanoparticles uh, has much lower, in case of gold nanoparticles, it's three times lower uh, melting temperature than the bulk one. So in principle, we can, we can create a film on liquid-liquid interface and transfer it uh, to any substrate, in this case metal foil, and then just heat it up for two or three hundred uh, 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 degrees and then create such a nice uh, texture. Uh, Ceres and electrochemical Ceres. Uh, this is very, uh, very interesting, um, uh, very interesting topic that we tried to touch, but <laughs> but never succeeded in it. But I think it's really a cool story when when you can combine electrochemistry with uh, some Ceres detection of of the products or some intermediates. And uh, as a logical uh, a continuation of this story is interfacial electrochemical cells, cells. So when you have interface, when you have uh, analytes distributing in one phase, in another phase, and uh, you can, uh, by adjusting the potential, bring to the interface or assemble at the interface uh, some uh, molecules like porphyrins, like uh, some drugs, uh, substances, and so on and so forth, and then analyze them one by one in complex mixture. It, this is this is really uh, cool, but uh, I think by now still uh, not done. Uh, yeah, and the last but not least, the, this uh, this is electrochemical drop shape analysis that we uh, uh, tried uh, once uh, with. Uh, Cartropic agents, and we show that uh, uh, cartropic agents really have very strong effect on the, on interfacial tension. But again, uh, if we can understand the role uh, of electric field uh, in absorption and desorption process, I think we we will get better understanding how uh, to play with li liquid electrolyte, uh, liquid liquid um, interfaces uh, in a better way. <coughs> Okay, so this is people with whom I work in, this is Professor Hubert Giraud. Unfortunately, he's not 
here today, but I hope he, he, he will watch the, uh, the video uh, from Michal's YouTube channel. Uh, thank you very much, Michal. Thank you very much, Pekka and Dima, who was my uh, supervisors. Um, it was a real experience. And now I move to the, uh, the final part of my uh, talk today, uh, is a new laboratory at Moscow State University. So, as I said, laboratory called uh, Bioanalytical Methods and Optical uh, Sensing Systems. Uh, we have people from, where, uh, from uh, different backgrounds, let's say. Uh, we have a person who are uh, involved in uh, Raman spectroscopy, but from different aspects like bioanalytical chemistry, by, uh, like uh, kinetic method analysis. And we have a material scientist like, uh, like me, like Alessia. Uh, we have some, some students working with us in the laboratory and uh, our main goal uh, is a, a composite and hybrid optical sensing materials or elements or sensors uh, uh, based on uh, polymer and nanoparticles. Because we wanna, uh, and we target cheap and very fast detection in complex media when uh, with one sensor you, you can do everything. <clears throat> and why spectroscopy, uh, not other methods? Because, simply speaking, because human eye is a spectrometer, because we can recognize colors, we, we, we can understand the intensity of the color, uh, at least uh, maybe not in the digital scale, but at least high, low, and so on. Uh, this method allows uh, very fast visualization because uh, we can recognize that something is wrong or something is good uh, in a second. We do not need to go through all complex mass to calculate something and so on. We, we just see something and we understand if it's good or not. Fingerprints, uh, spectroscopy allows you to use fingerprints without a detailed understanding of uh, what is happening uh, in the reality. Uh, easy interpretation and uh, again, very, very important point that there are plenty of uh, compact devices on the market. So literally speaking, you can buy a small spectrometer to your smartphone, connect with a, uh, with a, with a USB-C or with lightning uh, connector, and that's all. You, you can do whatever you want. You, you just need uh, to buy a sensor, read the instruction how to use it, and uh, just do it. And of course, you know one of such sensors, it's a pregnancy test, because uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, uh, this is what, what made our civilization right now, uh, because we literally, in a second, can see, uh, is it good or not, uh, is a woman is pregnant or not. And this is a compact device, action. Uh, from uh, spectroscopy point of view, we have several analytical signals, uh, absorbance, so we use photometry, normal UVVs, uh, fluorescence, uh, here we use emission, uh, and Raman schedule. Uh, analytes, uh, currently we are, uh, we are targeting several groups of analytes, such as, such as biomarkers. Uh, such as oil products, uh, some eco -tox, uh, ecological uh, toxic uh, products like in wastewater and gases. <clears throat> Once again, uh, uh, we are, this is a translation from a presentation of my uh, colleagues uh, uh, who won the Omnic uh, competition. This is kind of like uh, very early stage uh, venture um, venture funding uh, program uh, and uh, the idea is again we have one sensor one platform uh, that we know how to that we know how it will behave in different situations with different analytes and modifiers and so on and we target different ap applications here how does it work it's very simple so we have a uh, biochemical sensitive uh, compounds uh, we deposit uh, them on the um, on the glass slide by spin coating by dipping several methods air drying uh, then we add either nanoparticles either some uh, additional compound and that's all we we have a sensor that can be used um, 
uh, for uh, very fast uh, and uh, uh, very easy detection. Examples. Uh, one example, uh, phenol uh, and the peroxides, because they are kind of like uh, substi uh, substitutable, vice versa. Uh, so if we have uh, uh, phenol molecules, uh, any kind of like phenol molecules, and we have a peroxide in our film, uh, film uh, is made of uh, hitosan with uh, some terzanase, so we create uh, a quinone, and then this quinone uh, can um, interact with a uh, hitosan film, uh, and that's all. We uh, observe some uh, increasing or dropping in uh, uh, in analytical signal, in this case absorbent, uh, and we can, in principle, detect uh, uh, can detect uh, phenols, uh, quinones, uh, or uh, vice versa. If we add uh, phenol to the field, we can detect uh, peroxides with a pretty good uh, uh, limit of detection with pretty good uh, reproducibility. And uh, for example, uh, kin uh, we tried to detect quinone as, because it's used as an antioxidant in some creams. Uh, by HPLC, it gives you uh, 1.9 plus minus 0.1 percent, and by uh, such method uh, based on uh, based on a po a polymeric film uh, with uh, some uh, some uh, reagent in it, it gives you in both cases the same result. Another story is uh, polyaromatic sulfur heterocycles uh, in fuels. Uh, why we need to detect this uh, and why we need to control this because uh, sulfur uh, may cause degradation of your motor oil and this is not very good for uh, for motors, especially for modern ones that is really precise and really uh, uh, really fine-tuned. Uh, there are several compounds uh, that we, we can target them. Uh, so it's uh, dibenzotefen, dimethyl dibenzotefen, different oxides, and so on and so on. But uh, the problem is that most of them, they are uh, not visible uh, in uh, UV or near infrared, and they are visible only in UV. And the problem is that fuel is also absorbs uh, UV light. Uh, so we need to uh, shift somehow the, the absorbance uh, or uh, emission uh, to visible or near infrared region, and we used here charge transfer complexes uh, like like this. So for example, with uh, again quinones, uh, and in principle, my work uh, part of my work in uh, in, in LEPA at the PFF, uh, it was devoted also to charge transfer complexes. Uh, and then uh, what what can be done? We can we can do some Raman spectroscopy, we can do some uh, regular spectroscopy like absorbance and so on and so on. And here you can see if we uh, take uh, just regular fuel, we add DBT, for example, 10 micromole, uh, we found almost 10 micromole with very small uh, error. Uh, if we add 300, again, we, uh, we found almost 300 with a small error. Um, and in principle, we also can uh, we, we can do both like uh, uh, sulfur heterocycles, we can uh, detect uh, poly, polyaromatic hydrocarbons. Uh, here I advise you to, to check these uh, um, articles because there are much more and much more detailed information in, in it, okay? And the third example, I hope, yeah, I hope I'm on time. Uh, very important uh, from the point of view of uh, point of care devices, uh, health monitoring, and so on and so forth. Uh, this is about neurotransmitters, uh, bioamines in biological f uh, fluids. Uh, for example, um, you know, how we can uh, detect Alzheimer or Parkinson disease. Uh, is uh, uh, tracking uh, biomines, for example, uh, all, all well-known uh, hormones like uh, uh, 
Oh, wait a second. I forgot how it's in, in English. <laughs> uh, like, um, uh, oh my God. I forgot. Sorry, guys. Uh, anyway, uh, this is by our mind, so you like, uh, uh, you, you will know them, okay, uh, I, I need just to play them on, on, the, on, the, on, on the slide. Anyway, uh, what we can do, we can uh, add, uh, we can separate like plasma, uh, take uh, plasma samples. From plasma samples, uh, we can play with addition, we, we can play with this by recognizing film based on uh, hitosan and some uh, uh, terazinase. Uh, and we also can, uh, add, uh, uh, we should add some uh, uh, additional uh, uh, chemicals, uh, compounds. And then uh, in the presence of uh, peroxide, we can uh, uh, do uh, a multiple detection of uh, biomines, uh, all this uh, epinephrine, uh, dopamine, and, and so on. But uh, the, the idea here, uh, since it's spectroscopy method that we can also uh, play with some derivatives like first and the second derivative of fluorescent spectra and uh, very very easily detect uh, up to uh, 20 different compounds in uh, 10, uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes. So once again I advise you to follow the, the link that is given here and the final slide I hope. Uh, brief summary uh, of uh, the, the result that was uh, obtained uh, in, in, in my current lab. And uh, what we are going to do is to implement uh, all the uh, enhancing uh, methods uh, like uh, SEFs, like metal enhanced uh, fluorescence uh, and so on and so forth in order to uh, increase analytical signal as much as we can. And why we need that? Because we want to, uh, we and we aim and uh, target uh, portable devices. So portabilization, uh, when you can buy just just a sensing uh, stripe, and then with your device, so with your very small uh, portable uh, uh, spectrometer, uh, do. Uh, very nice uh, and very easy uh, detection of uh, some important uh, some important uh, molecules like as I said uh, major transmitter transmitters and so on and so forth uh, and uh, here we want to really uh, reach uh, LOD uh, and the necessary analytical behavior uh, comparable with the top lab devices. Okay, uh, that's all. Uh, I hope I, I'm almost on time, uh, 45 minutes. Uh, so uh, LEPA uh, homepage here, our recent uh, MSU homepage over there. Uh, unfortunately, it's still in Russian. We're working on translation, but I think if you're using uh, Google Chrome, uh, browser, uh, it can translate it for you, no problem. Okay, uh, thank you very much, and I hope we use you have questions. Thanks so much, Eugene. Uh, really comprehensive talk. Yeah, very nice. Um, some of my favorite results ever. <laughs> so I enjoyed it. Um, maybe if you can stop sharing the screen there, and sure. we'll, uh, hopefully get some questions.